It's 2015, we're starting to see 10 gigabit enter the mainstream. And so we're gonna take a look at the Netgear XS712T 10 gigabit ethernet switch. We're taking a look at the Netgear XS712T 10 gigabit ethernet switch. Now we're looking at the 12 port version, but this really is heralding the age of 10 gigabit ethernet. Now 10 gig ethernet devices have been around for years, but they have been ludicrously expensive. This thing is priced super aggressively and it really delivers on the 10 gigabit promise. So we're going to take a look at it. It is purposely designed as a cost effective way to provide 10 gig connections to 10 gig capable servers, network attached storage, workstations, that kind of thing. What does 10 gig mean in the real world? Well, if you've got a gigabit LAN, that means you can move data at about 100 megabytes per second. That's a little slower than a mechanical hard drive and that's 5 to 10 times slower than an SSD. If you have a server that has a bunch of high performance hard drives in it or you know high performance SSDs or or anything like that your bottleneck is going to be your network even at gigabit speeds. So if you upgrade to 10 gigabit, you're going to be able to move up to a gigabyte per second through your copper connection. It's uh, arranged in three groups of four ports and it's got a large open vent on the right side and then there's a security lock in the back. It comes with a mounting kit for a standard 19 inch rack as well as rubber feet if you're not going to rack mount it and you're just going to have it sitting on the desk. Now plugged in uh, it's fairly quiet. I mean, it's not it's not whisper quiet. Um, it generates a lot of heat when we're testing it under load, and so the fans can get kind of loud when you first plug it in. I think the fans are at full speed. It's pretty loud. So if you're going to have a lot of devices plugged into this, and it's going to be pumping out uh, a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, packets, it's probably going to generate a lot of heat, and then so the fans are going to kick up. So it's just something to be aware of. It does get warm if you put your hand on top of it. You've really got to make sure this thing can breathe. It's got the open thing on the side. So wherever you put this, you'd better make sure that it's able to breathe and it's able to pull in, you know, cool air. It looks like an ordinary Ethernet switch, except it's deceptively heavy. And so it's so heavy that we actually have to take it apart and see what's inside it. So let's pop the hood, you know, while it's on. Q cringes from the peanut gallery. As you might expect, 10 gig is sort of a new technology and being a new technology, it still generates an insane amount of heat. So when we got this thing apart, it's all heat sink. From end to end is nothing but heat sinks as far as the eye can see. The power supply is physically uh, isolated. That's great, that's awesome. Internally, there are two four pin, uh, potentially high RPM fans. These are standard fan connector looks like, which is good. So it'll be easy to replace if you have a fan that dies or you know gets clogged with dust or whatever. Um, you know, here's the CPU and the flash ROM for the OS. I didn't really dig into what sort of OS this thing was running, but that'll be worth a look later. And there also is some sort of console port here, but what it is is undocumented. My guess is that's for internal use only. After I've gotten a little bit more um, video footage of this thing, I will explore this port further. It does have a web interface, and we're going to dive into the web interface in the next video and take a look at some of the features under the hood. But um, this is uh, basically a managed layer two switch. Netgear has been very careful not to introduce a device that'll compete with some of their higher end offerings. So they've got a 10 gig totally managed like infrastructure managed from the command line SSH into it switch. That's the XSM 7224. And I think they've really carefully chosen the feature set of this switch to not really compete with that switch. Now this switch is going to make some more appearances in some of our future videos, especially on some enterprise topics. So if you guys want to see anything about, you know, setting up uh, automatic VLAN tagging or, you know, port-based security, like port-based IPsec security or anything like that, leave a note in the comments below um, so that we can sort of demo that. You know, we've got the enterprise channel, and I would like to do good enterprise content that also doesn't take 17 years to produce. So this switch is going to show up a bunch more. We've got another video coming up with benchmarks, but I'll just tell you right now that it, it basically uh, lives up to the name. There, there really wasn't anything that I ran in, into trouble with. So this thing was really solid. Uh, we're polishing up that video now. That should be out soon. If you have any questions or, you know, you just sort of, sort of want to poke at it or you want to come visit us over in the forums, come and visit us over in the forums. Ask your questions. If you've got one, come over to the forums and let us know. Let us know what your thoughts are. All right, well, we'll see you in the forums over at techsyndicate.com. This is Wendell signing off. Mm -hmm.